From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Byron Kay in Boston, Johnny. Hi. The operator had quite a time locating you. I don't see why. I'm in the only available room for rent here in Cod Harbor. Huh? Well, she said she was ringing Meg's Palace Restaurant. That's where I am. Room's right above the place. Well, tell me, have you found out whether it's true somebody's trying to burn up that joint and put Meg out of business? Not only that, boy, but whoever's behind the attempts to get her out of the way has threatened to get me. Hey. Hey, you want some help? Yeah. Yeah, I want you to send me something by truck as soon as possible. Huh? And I want to be sure it arrives here quietly at night so that nobody in this little fishing village knows it arrives. Holy smoke, what? Listen carefully, boy, and I'll tell you. I want you to send me six large... <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Cod Harbor, Massachusetts... To the Intercoastal Maritime and Life Insurance Company, Boston. Assignment, the Meg's Palace matter. Expense account continued. Expense account item, well, since you're paying for and sending that batch of fire extinguishers, Byron, I can hardly charge them to my expense account, can I? But I have a sneaking suspicion they might be mighty important. A cursory inspection of this tiny fishing community has revealed no sign of a firehouse. Nothing, in fact, but some hose connections for cleaning off the docks. And after the threats Meg McCarthy has received, plus a couple of attempts to fire up this disreputable-looking establishment of hers, well, I guess I still have some Boy Scout blood in my veins. In view of the threat to me, I figured it might be a good idea to consult the local authorities. I learned a long time ago that it's a good plan to enlist their cooperation when working in a strange small community. Inquiries from some of the fishermen mending their nets spread out in the long wharf led me to a small, shabby, unmarked frame shack that stood about a block away from the waterfront. Hey, come in, come in. Mr. Beasley? That's right. Well, what's your name? Johnny Dollar. Dollar, hmm? Okay, what do you want? Well, uh, you're the chief of police, I understand. Acting chief of police? Oh, Acting mayor, too, an acting judge, acting town clerk, acting just about anything else you could want. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, I don't know why not. Officially, I guess Card Harbor is just a part of Barnesboro, a couple of miles inland. We're so small, and we're not incorporated like most towns, so we just have to be kind of self-sufficient under ourselves. You see what I mean? And you know something? It works out pretty good. Yeah, well, I guess it's as chief, uh, as acting chief of police that I've come to see you. Yeah, what about? The Meg's Palace Cafe. Ah, you mean you take any stock in Meg's talk about somebody threatening to burn up that cockroach loaded dump she calls a restaurant? I'm representing the insurance company that holds $15,000 insurance on it. Never come to your mind, Mr. Dollar, that Meg, her own self, might have set the fires to collect that insurance? And call for help as a cover-up? Yeah, yeah, the thought has entered my mind. Just crazy enough to do a thing like that, too. Hasn't she been to you for help? She told me. Oh, what sort of evidence, one way or another, have you turned up? Dollar, I haven't looked for any. Yeah, what? The less I meddle in their affairs, the less trouble I'll have with the folks here in Cod Harbor. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. For a mayor and police chief and so on, you don't seem to be very concerned about these people of yours. So maybe I'm not. What's the difference? Well, look here, if you... Yeah, you know, unless something serious happened, like a murder or... Or, or a fire that destroyed Meg's palace and maybe half the docks? Don't you think that sort of thing is serious? Well, yeah, if it happens. Then I'd probably have to call in the regular appointed authorities over to Barnesboro. But there hasn't been any fire yet. Not any real one. So why get your dander up? Well, I'll be... Look, with so little concern about the place, how did you ever get all those jobs? (laughs) Easy. Lost my schooner out on the banks last fall. So for want of something better, I just took it. It took them all. Why not? The town feeds and bores me, and I like it. So... Real soft, lazy, good-for-nothing life, huh? Sure. Now, why don't you be a good boy, Dollar, and leave things be around here? Stop wasting my time. Well, just let me take enough of your valuable time to ask a couple of questions. Sure. Go ahead. No harm in asking. I want to know about some of the people here in Cod Harbor. Like who? 
Clem Harris, for one. Careful, boy. That's my cousin. Oh. Who else? Ernie Turner and Tony Fortino. Oh. A count of them's the three that run the other dirty bites along the dock, huh? Yeah. I'd like a rundown on all three of them. Easy. Yeah? Yeah. Go talk to them. Oh, now, wait a minute. The easiest you're... way I know of for you to find out all about them. Oh, you're a lot of help. Dollar, like I said, we're kind of self-sufficient under ourselves around here. We like it that way. And that's just another way of saying we don't like strangers coming here and messing around in our affairs. Well, that was pretty definitely that. It was getting quite late, and I decided I'd better postpone any interviews with Meg's business rivals until the following morning. Besides, as I walked along the wharf, I noticed that they were closed. Then I remembered somebody else I wanted to talk to, the beneficiary of Meg McCarthy's life insurance policy, the master of the fishing boat, Lily Ann, Captain Billy Morgan. But the Lily Ann, tied up at her berth, was dark and empty. Well, if anyone knew where Captain Billy was, it'd be Meg herself. So I walked the boards back to Meg's palace. What greeted me as I opened the back door of the place was truly a sight to behold. Over there with that hole, just come of the land lovingly. Over there in the corner, can't you see? What's the matter with your blinking eyeball? Standing in the center of the floor, brandishing a moth-eaten feather duster as if it were a club, stood Captain Billy Morgan, shouting orders to three men who were cleaning up the mess of pots and pans and broken crockery left over from Meg McCarthy's temper tantrum of a short while earlier when she belabored this same Captain Billy for a little celebration he and his crew had had in their place the night before. Belabored? It looked like she must have thrown one of everything in the joint at him. Bill! Hey, Captain Billy! Hey! Hey! Oh! Oh, it's you, huh? I seen you here earlier today when Meg threw me out. Now, looks to me like you weren't all she threw. Yes, sir. Oh, she's a living dog. Hey, see, ain't you the insurance hand? She telephoned to help her find out who's trying to burn her out of here. Her name's uh, Johnny Dollar, ain't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And Captain, I'd like to ask you a favor. Charlie, you yellow-bellied, bug-eyed, bandy wasted Don't throw that trash in the corner. What's the matter with you? Sorry, Mr. Dollar, but I guess the boys don't like working at night when they got to be up in the board of Lily Ann and headed out for the fishing banks by 3 a.m. in the morning. Don't blame him. Yeah, we couldn't leave Meg's place in a mess like this, now could we? After all, uh, she's going to have to serve us coffee and sinkers before we go. Well, where is she? Upstairs. Has been for the last hour. In her room? Uh, in that room she's renting out to you. Figured like maybe you could stand some cleaning up and debugging, I guess. You know something? <laughs> she figured right. I'll ask her with the mop all ear. I'll ring it around your bloody neck. And swab off them tables while you're at it. Can't you see the mess you left on them? Now, uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Dollar? Well, look, why don't you and I go into the kitchen, Captain, where we can hear ourselves think? Well, sure, why not? All right, now, you keep out at your saw building lunkheads. And if the joint ain't clean and tidy when I come back, I'll flash you all over the lease cuppers. Yeah. <laughs> Real fine bunch of boys I got there, ain't they? I'll bite, are they? You bet your sweet living life they are. Finest crew on any boat in the harbor. Charlie Oley and Montgomery. Now, uh, what was it you wanted, Mr. Dollar? You found out anything about who's causing all the worries to my lover girl? Not very much, yet. Well, I hope you do. Do you? Huh? I don't get you. I'm going to be honest with you. Lay all the cards right on the table. Well, that's the only way, I always say. All right. I'm just as concerned about Meg herself as I am about this cafe. Sure you are. Me too. Now, whether you like it or not, I have to consider the fact that you are the beneficiary of Meg's $25,000 life insurance policy. If anything were to happen to her... Why, sure, I see what you mean. You bet your life I see what you mean. Why, you blasted, land-loving son of a All dirty right, yellow sculpin. Take it easy, Captain. Take, take it, it easy. easy. You Pipe try down. to say I hurt one single hair, Meg McCut. Dollar, you may crash like that. I'll swab the decks with that ornery hide of yours and feed you. Put him up. Put him up, Dollar. You want to talk to me I like that? I said right down, Captain. Let's talk sense a minute. Talk sense, yeah, but don't you go implicating that I... I didn't imply a thing yet. Well, I warn you, you just don't. Just a minute there, Pat. Captain Billy Morgan. Oh, oh, just Meg, a I, minute. Uh, Who do you think you're talking to like that, the guest of me humble establishment? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Meg, darling, but he and was And why ain't like... you in there helping those poor boys of yours with the cleaning up? Well, but they, they're almost finished up, Meg, me darling. Besides, they... unless you ought to get out of here and get your sleep, you'll not be worth your salt on the boat tomorrow. Meg, I'd like I... to talk to Captain Billy. Tomorrow. 
go out in the boat with him in the morning, and you'll all have plenty of time to talk. Well, I want to talk will to him now. Will you, boy, no. get uh, out with them? Go on. Well, yes, my dear. And I'll see you at the dock at three in the morning. Well, now, wait a minute. Get, get, yo! Also, Johnny boy, you go out with him. It'll give me a chance to fix your room up real nice for you, like it should be for a gentleman <laughs> like yourself. Okay, Meg. Come to think of it, I was promised a fishing trip on this case. Anyways, I'll not be worrying about any fires tonight with you staying here. So if you don't mind, I'll retire to my bed and see you at breakfast time. Okay. Maybe I can help Billy's crew finish cleaning up in there. Oh, don't you lift a finger. It was a twilly boy I told them plates and things so him and his crew can clean it up. Good night, Johnny boy. There's food in the icebox and your bed's all made when you're ready to retire. I stood there for a moment, smiling after her. Then I decided I'd take her advice, that instead of helping the men clean up the cafe, I'd get a breath of fresh air before hitting the sack. The moon was just a thin sliver in the eastern sky, and the stars twinkled merrily in the broad, clear expanse overhead. The cottages of the peaceful little fishing village were dark. Along the docks at the waterfront, the fishing boats playfully nudged each other as they slowly and quietly swung and rolled on the gently heaving water. Their mass and rigging formed an intricate, ever-changing pattern against the occasional beam from the lighthouse in the point as it lazily swept across the night. Somewhere, far out on the landward breeze, an occasional seabird called. It was all so peaceful and serene that I couldn't help wondering how trouble could ever come to a... Then I saw it. A slight movement at the front corner of the old building. A silhouette hunched over, tensely watching the front door, waiting. But waiting for whom? Slowly, as quietly as possible, I crept up on whoever it was, hoping in the dim light to recognize him or her before I was discovered. Softly, I passed the side door. I could still hear the members of the crew inside at their work. But in my concentration and the person out front, I was too slow in my reaction when that side door suddenly opened behind me. Huh? What? Who are you? Oh, no, you... Oh... And very suddenly, it got very dark. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a trip to sea on the Lily Ann that starts out like an ordinary fishing trip. But somewhere on board lurks a man with murder in his heart. And his next intended victim, me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>